Hey everyone, Alexander, joffoxphotography.com. Hope everyone's doing all right. Welcome back to another video. Today is a quick tutorial, very quick, I promise, on how to make a mirrored reflection on the floor of your subject within the studio. As you know, I have a home studio that I've built up over the years, but I do not in fact have a mirror that people lay on or sit on when I do get in fact that mirrored image. So I'll show you how to take this and turn it into this in Photoshop right now. So here's the image I'm working on. It's from a recent shoot with Damien. He wanted to showcase some product and uh, we had fun doing it. He wanted some anime and cyberpunk features and he gave me free creative control within the editing process and the post-production. So I figured that mirrored reflection would look really cool given the fact those two golden swords are coming down and make some symmetry and give the image a little more of a pop. So how do we do that? First and foremost, I will hit Command J on a Mac to, let me select it. Command J on a Mac to duplicate the layer and then I'll name this layer uh, base. From there, I will go ahead and make a selection of my subject. Now, as you can see, it's very obvious he's on some sort of fabric backdrop. There's all sorts of fuzz. It looks like cat fur. I don't have a cat, but I work with a lot of models that have cats, but maybe that's, I don't know. So regardless, we gotta clean up that backdrop and make it look really clean, really crisp. And uh, let's go ahead and do that now. So hit uh, W on your keyboard if you're using a Mac or if you haven't configured your settings and hit select subject. Now in Photoshop CC 2020, the automatic selection tool does a pretty good job of selecting your subject automatically. Uh, you might have to clean it up a little bit, but I'm only concerned about the lower part of my subject because that's only the part that's going to be showing up in the reflection. Uh, so let's go ahead and make sure the swords are have a clean selection on them. The alternative to the quick selection tool would be in fact the pen tool, and that's gonna take you a little longer but uh, you'll have a more precise cutout, but we don't need a precise cutout for this. All right, we've, we've selected our subject. Now what we can do to clean up that floor quick and easy is hit our gradient tool, uh, hold down your uh, alt or option button and select one of the darkest colors within the image. You wanna make sure you uh, select from the image and not use black or something because you wanna keep those colors and that palette consistent. And then holding down your shift key, drag up and, oh crap. Let me back up. Your, 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 your subject is selected, hit shift command I to uh, invert the selection. So now we have everything except the subject selected. Very important uh, fact or tip. Now do the same thing, shift, hold up and drag. And as you can see, the gradient feature has been applied to everything other than the subject. It's a gradient going up. I wanna keep that smoke in focus still, but the uh, gradient, as you can see, is applied more so towards the floor, making it look a little cleaner. Okay, hit Command D to deselect, and that's looking good, I like it, it's looking dramatic, but now I want to add that mirrored effect. How do we do that? Same thing, go, go ahead and hit Select, Reselect, hit Shift Command I to get the selection back on just your subject, hit Command J to duplicate that selection, which will be just in fact your subject. As you can see, if we hit Command J and hit Foreground Cut, it would just be him, right? So, um, that would be the selection. And as you can see, it's not a perfect selection, but that's okay because we're just going to invert it, which we're going to do now. On your selected subject, go ahead and hit Command T. That'll bring up the transform dialog box and go ahead and hit flip vertical. Now we have uh, have in fact achieved a mirrored image inverted of our subject. Use the guides to make sure it is level and center. And there you have it. But for me, it's looking a little too clean, right? It's looking a little too like I might've just done that. So what you can do to add a little bit of texture and dimension to the reflection is play with your blend modes. Instead of having your normal blend mode, hit uh, something like screen. And as you can see, it's slightly off colored, looks a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of difference now, which is what you want. Now I'll play with my opacity and maybe something like 58, looks good. And lastly, I'll add a blur just to uh, give it more texture even. And 20, 28 looks good. No, I'm gonna bring it there, maybe 26. Yeah, there we go. And Shift Command E to merge your layers and there you have it, before and your after. Now this is just uh, a technique you can use. It's not necessary, but uh, any little technique you can collect along the way to make your image pop, any little trick you learn along the way is a, is a great thing just to keep in your uh, handy toolkit. So I uh, hope this has helped. Uh, feel free to reach out with any questions. People that have asked me to how to do this, uh, thank you for your question. 
I'll continue to make these videos as long as I get questions. So uh, yeah, thank you, and I'll catch you in the next video.